Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about the symbols that you should use on a use case diagram of following the rules of the Unified Modeling Language. Well, actually, whatever rules you follow. When you are drawing diagrams such as the use case diagram, you should always use the correct symbols because this is a tool of communication. And as I mentioned before, communication is a two-way street. It only works if both parties, the person receiving and the person sending, are using common terminology. In the world of diagrams, that means that every symbol has to, has, conveys a specific meaning. And if you use the correct symbols, you are conveying the correct thing to the recipient or to the person looking at the diagram. So on a use case diagram, the first symbol you're going to see, logically enough, is a thing called a use case. Have here an example of three different use cases, one use case for browse website, a use case for place order, and a use case for check order status. If all three of these use cases, if this is the way we represent a use case, by convention, we're using an oval. Very important to use an oval because the circle in the world of UML has a very different meaning. The oval is, indicates that this is a use case, uh, and the name of the use case is written inside the oval by convention. By the way, that dotted line, as it says, is also convention, and that is merely to say that this comment is related to this object. So since the dotted line connects the text with that object bar, uh, browse website, it's saying that this is how, what this re, uh, comment is related to. Now, if all three of these use cases are part of a common application or a single application, you might put them together in what the UML calls a package. Now, symbol for a package is this thing that looks a bit like a folder with a tab on top. Uh, that basically just says these three things are part of this package and uh, they are going to be defined. They're going to be within the scope of this package. They are going to be clearly delineated and defined. Next symbol we see is the actor. And the actor, in this case, our example is a shopper, interacts with in the, the browse website. So there is a connecting line between the actor, shopper, and the use case uh, browse website. You also see that the shopper can place an order. That is one of the features or one of the things that they can use these, this use case to do, that uh, uh, they could interact with the use case place order. The credit card processor, if you're paying with a credit card, typically is going to be an external entity or an external API that place order is going to go to to get your credit card processed. Since you can have multiple different types of credit cards, American Express, MasterCard, etc., uh, it's going to go to whatever credit card processor is appropriate. That really says that this actor credit card processor can have a few different conventions. They can actually be a fairly complex thing in and of themselves. That complexity is hidden in the use case diagram. We uh, consciously try to keep this as simple as possible because it's a tool of communication between the business community and the IT world. Now, we have a check order status uh, use case down here. And fundamentally, that's a little different than the others because this is something that you can't do as a shopper. You have to have placed an order, meaning you have to have become a customer in order to use the check order status. So we've changed an actor name. We have an actor called a customer. Now, this is really interesting because it also shows that on a use case diagram, the customer could be a shopper in the future. Until that customer has logged in and we know that they are a known customer, they are going to be going under the uh, generic shopper actor. If they are already logged in, we know they're a customer, there may be other use cases that they could access in their role as customer. But in, in this particular example, the only one we're interested in showing is the check order status. Check order status involves a shipping clerk who's going to give the customer information about uh, where the, when the package was shipped or when it's expected to be shipped, what the status of that order is. Finally, the uh, lines that you see connecting the actors with the use case. In both sides, you see that they are a straight line. There's no arrow on them. Now, if you, people by uh, habit, if you will, can put an arrow on there because the initial interaction is going to come from the, uh, the actors on the left, which we call here primary actors. They are the only ones that can initiate one of these use cases. They can trigger it. Whereas the secondary actors, which by convention are on the right side of the diagram, are the inter, are, are actors that are going to be interacting with the use case in order to achieve the desired business goal, namely getting the order shipped to the customer, getting their money. The connecting lines have no arrows for the very simple reason they indicate interaction. If you put an arrowhead on them, it looks like it's unidirectional, meaning it's only going 
from the actor to the use case, or in the case of secondary actors, perhaps from the use case to the secondary actor. Uh, you could put arrowheads on both ends, which would then add uh, something to the diagram that is not necessarily uh, revealing, because the lines by convention, a solid line, is interaction between two entities, in this case, actors and use cases. So that's the connecting line. Very important that it's a solid line. It's not a dotted line. The dotted line indicates this is a comment connected to some object on the diagram, whereas the solid line indicates a connection between two different objects on the diagram. 